And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Greetings, I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Peter Chan with your Alaska Aviation Weather Outlook on this Thursday, July 11th. And this outlook will be for Friday and Saturday. And to set the stage, we have a couple of areas of low pressure that are gonna pinwheel here out over the eastern bearing and along the southwestern uh, coast of the mainland. And as that happens, a secondary low will develop and then lift across Kodiak Island and kind of split uh, through the Kenai Peninsula on Saturday. Any way you slice this, it's going to be a very wet and windy system. First of all, the rains that we're dealing with now out along areas of the southwest mainland and southwest coast, that'll be the short term for Friday. But then as we get into the weekend, pretty good surge of heavier rainfall working its way up along the Gulf Coast, especially areas where you have any type of terrain enhancement with an east-southeast flow that would include especially, say, the west side of the Susitna Valley up against the Alaska Range. Some very heavy rains will be falling in this area. Uh, extending down along uh, the west side of Cook Inlet. Also, the eastern Kenai area surrounding Prince William Sound extending out uh, to Yakutat Bay as we get into Saturday and Sunday. So this is going to be a very wet system. Gale force winds also going to set up here over areas of the Gulf, especially at the entrance of Cook Inlet and Hinchinbrook entrance here in the north central Gulf. We'll likely experience a period of gale force winds and some turbulence, especially uh, Saturday. So by the time we get into Friday afternoon, we have low pressure pinwheeling around here, bringing IFR conditions along just south, off the southwest coast. We have IFR conditions east side of Kodiak Island and the Pacific side of the central Alaska Peninsula. Pockets of IFR across the northern panhandle, also out toward the outer uh, southwest coast, especially south there of Sitka and just west of Craig. We could see isolated to a few scattered thunderstorms pop up in the interior. Still enough daytime heating, afternoon, evening hours for convection in this region, though that will tend to shut down later this weekend. The air is going to be more unstable as cloud cover will be more extensive. We're expecting uh, more in the way of moisture to be transported northward into the interior, even getting into eastern areas late this weekend and early next week. So Friday afternoon, that's the way it looks. And then Saturday morning, notice the widespread IFR conditions in the Gulf along the eastern Kenai, east side of Kodiak Island, as low pressure rides up across uh, Kodiak Island and then kind of makes a split going through the Kenai. You're gonna have a front with gale force winds. IFR conditions extend up into areas of the Panhandle. Also, we see pockets of IFR off the Arctic coast and then out here over the uh, north central portion of the Bering Sea, including uh, St. Lawrence Island, west side of Nunavik Island. And for Saturday afternoon, we're gonna have large swaths of rain and rain showers along with breezy conditions. IFR conditions out over the Gulf, uh, perhaps northern Panhandle, east side of the Kenai. And widespread MVFR conditions associated with a, a large area of lower cloud cover and rain and wouldn't be surprised to see more in the way of some IFR conditions persisting in areas, so keep that in mind. Uh, Saturday will be a, a tougher day uh, to even be able to get out uh, across the Gulf Coast area and up into South Central. So for Friday, uh, in the East Central portion of the Brooks Range, Anatovic Pass should hold on to VFR conditions. Could be some cumulus buildups afternoon, evening with perhaps an isolated thunderstorm, especially west of the pass on Friday afternoon and evening. Adigan Pass, VFR conditions, though there could be some cumulus buildups the best chance of any convection, just a little further south there of the south entrance as you're flying toward the Yukon River. Lake Clark and Merrill, MVFR conditions expected throughout the day. Friday, same thing, rainy pass, MVFR. Windy pass, MVFR giving way to VFR conditions uh, by afternoon. Same thing, Isabel pass, MVFR early in the day giving way to VFR. Mentasta should be able to hold on to VFR conditions on the far eastern portion of the Alaska range toward the Elkan border. And then as we drop further south across the Copper River Basin, uh, Tanita Pass, MVFR, and Portage Pass should generally see MVFR conditions throughout the day Friday. In the north end of the Panhandle, Chilkoot and White will be stuck with IFR conditions on Friday with more on the way probably by the time we get into Saturday and Sunday. 
So looking at the freezing levels aloft, we have some ridging still coming out of northwest Canada up here into the northeast mainland where freezing levels are actually around in the mid above 10,000 feet. And then a colder pocket of air aloft out here over the northern half of the Bering Sea associated with what was a little colder core low dropping uh, southwestward back across eastern Russia. That low along with another, they're just going to kind of dumbbell pivot around each other here just along the southwest coast, the YK uh, coastline. And so we'll have that low just kind of sitting and spinning here Friday into Saturday. Secondary low is going to form here in this warmer, moist air mass along and south of the Alaska Peninsula and then right up through uh, Kodiak Island in the pre-dawn hours of Saturday morning and then the tendency for the low to want to split some of the energy. But it's going to bring a gale force front up into the Gulf with the best chance of gale force winds coming in there at the entrance of Cook Inlet as well as their Hinchinbrook entrance uh, during the day on Saturday, Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon. And the greatest threat for icing associated with the areas of rain and thicker cloud cover, though it is a milder air mass, so the freezing levels are higher. So we expect the icing to be above 8,000 feet here across areas of the west southwest, above 12,000 feet as we get down here in the northern Alaska Peninsula, uh, down into the western southwest Gulf around uh, Kodiak Island. We could see some uh, icing above 10,000 feet, pockets there near and east of uh, Yakutat and into uh, northern central parts of the Panhandle. And then this area just west southwest of the central Aleutians but quite high above a flight level of 18,000 feet simply because the freezing levels down that way are in excess of 15,000 feet. So jet stream level winds we have a broad circulation 30,000 feet with a 115 knot jet core uh, just to the south kind of right over uh, Pribilof Islands and as we take it to the mid-levels, here we have the circulation clearly present. This is the primary low circulation here over the bearing. This is keeping a cooler and wet pattern going across much of Alaska. And we anticipate that trend to continue at least through mid-month. Strongest winds at mid-levels are in excess of 60 to as high as 70, 75 knots south of the central and eastern Aleutians. And then as we bring it down to 3,000 feet there, is a belt of stronger winds. So we have this dumbbell, this dual low that's gonna be kind of pivoting around itself. Ahead of it, southeast to south flow, could be as high as 40 to 50, even 55 knots, cutting across the west arm here of the Alaska Range entrance of Cook Inlet. Could be potentially some isolated severe turbulence within this area of the south and southwest. Broad belt of winds as the frontal system works its way up into the Gulf uh, of 40 to it locally as high as 50 knots there in the North Pacific. So the outlook for turbulence on Friday, the greatest threat for turbulence will be across the southwest mainland and down into the Alaska Peninsula and around Kodiak Island, the entrance of Cook Inlet. Surface to 4,000 feet, we expect widespread moderate turbulence. There could be even some areas of isolated severe turbulence within this area of the southwest. So keep that in mind. But on top of the turbulence, you're also going to have poor conditions with uh, some heavier, moderate rainfall uh, and thicker cloud cover. So keep that in mind as visibilities could be reduced too in areas of fog as well.